Hey guys, Rusty over here, and today I have another gold guide for you, and this is going to focus on maps that you get from the old world, or essentially stuff that's not the current expansion, as in the last video, a lot of you guys were telling me that BFA maps were pretty much dead on your server for whatever reason, whether it be multi-boxers, or it's just the end of the expansion. Now guys, I have five methods for you here, however, there are a ton of old maps that sell well. If you feel you got one that I didn't mention in this video, feel free to leave a comment down below, and also, if this guide helped you, throw it a like. So, with that being said, let's get right into the guide. Now, as always, guys, I like to start out with the best method first, or at least what I think the best method is, and that's going to be to farm out your primal elements. That being your primal air, your water, your earth, and your fire from outland mobs. Now, there's two ways you could do this. You can actually go out and farm out the moats from the elementals. When you get 10 of the moats, you could combine them to turn it into the primal water, fire, earth, or air, depending on the element that you killed. Or the most time efficient way, in my opinion, is to do heroic shattered halls. Now, if you're not sure how this works, again, it has to be on Heroic. You clear the whole dungeon all the way to the end, and after the last boss, which is Kargath, you continue past him, and at the end there, there's going to be a Shattered Hand Executioner waiting for you. Now, as long as it's on Heroic, he should spawn, you kill him, and he has a, a random chance to drop one of the elements whether that be primal fire, water, earth, or air, and he will drop either two or three of them. Now, guys, you could clear this dungeon depending on your class. I, on my Demon Hunter, I think I did it in like three and a half minutes. I know I have the timer in the video for you guys. Now, obviously, that will depend on class, but you essentially, guys, you should be able to clear this instance super, super quick. Now, obviously, it has to be on Heroic, and that brings it to its first downside, which is the fact that it will be a daily lockout. So this method will really benefit those with alts. Now guys, most all, like I remember doing this back in MOP at level 90 and made a decent amount of gold at that. Most low level alts should be able to solo this dungeon no problem. So I have, I'm pretty sure I have somewhere around 16 to 17 alts I run this on daily. You could literally just park alts outside the dungeon, hop on them real quick, clear the dungeon in five minutes, boom, there you go. You just made a ton of gold most of the times. Now, prices guys are obviously going to vary and be different based on your server. I'm on US Emerald Dream, so this is the prices for that. Now, the best one, in my opinion, on most servers is going to be your Primal Air. One of them was going for nearly 1,000 gold. I have it here as 925, round it up. I guess it would be rounded down, but you get the point. It's a lot of gold. Primal Air is the one you want, it's the one you're hoping for. However, the other Primals still sell well. Primal Water was selling for around 400 gold, Primal Fire 350, Primal Earth kind of sucks, it's only 65 gold, so essentially you're hoping for one of the other three, ideally you want Primal Air. Now again guys, you can actually go and farm out mobs in Outland to get the moats, however, in my opinion still, it's you're just better off doing Heroic Shattered Halls on as many alts as you can, and when you're done with Shattered Halls, you're probably better off spending your time farming something else for gold. Now let's move on to the second farming method, and that's going to be to farm out Volatile Air, and this is my personal favorite, because the way you get the most Volatile Air is to farm out Vortex Pinnacle on normal difficulty up to the second boss, and guess what, the second boss drops a mount, being the Drake of the north wind so you get to make gold while farming out mounts at the same time it's a win-win situation i've done listen i had over 400 attempts on the drake of the north wind before this drop so believe me i know you make a lot of gold off this method i sold a lot of volatile air so essentially guys head over to the vortex panel again you want to do this on normal difficulty so you want to do this 10 times per hour so you hit instance cap you're going to clear up to the second boss. You want to clear every single trash mob. I, you can skip the Tempest that disappear when you look at them. They don't really matter. But you want to kill every other trash mob and loot them, and they drop a decent amount of volatile air. For one clear, for example, I got around 30 volatile air. And on Emerald Dream, one volatile air sells for 27 gold, stack of 200 being 5400. Now, once you kill the second boss, you could simply just jump off the edge. You will not die. It'll just port you right back to the beginning of the instance. You leave the instance, reset, jump back in, farm more mobs, farm the mount, and cry when the mount doesn't drop for or over 400 times. Anyways, for keep farming out that volatile air. It's a pretty good amount of gold. Now, let's move on to the third method, which is going to be to farm out volatile water. Now, for this, you're going to want to head over to the Twilight Highlands, the eastern end, near the Dragon Maw port. And over to the left of it, you're going to have these water elementals. Essentially, guys, you're just going to go in a big circle, keep killing these water elementals. Druids really excel at this because they got the flight form and just moonfire them and you just loot them. And they all have a chance to drop volatile water. Now, the drop chance isn't incredibly high on these. You might, you might kill like five elementals without seeing a volatile water. But the amount that they sell for usually offsets this. So, for example, on Emerald Dream, one volatile water sells for 60 gold. 
at least at the time of making this video, it did. So a stack of 200 is 12,000 gold. They sell for a lot and they usually sell pretty quick. Again, at least on Emerald Dream, prices and uh, the rate they sell will vary on the server. Now, again, this is nice because there is no cap to this. So, for example, if you finish your Shattered Halls and then you got Instance Cap doing your Volatile Air Form for Vor Vortex Pinnacle, you can simply head over down to the Twilight Highlands, farm out some Water Elementals to get your Volatile Water. And guess what? By the time you're done, maybe your Instance Cap is done, you can go back to not getting your Drake of the North Wind, but you will get back to get your Volatile Air. Now, let's move on to the fourth farming method, which is going to be to farm out your Ghost Iron Ore and also your Trillium Ore. Now, obviously, you're going to need a miner for this, and you want to head over to Pandaria. Now, listen, I'm sure a lot of people didn't like Mopina because Panda's in World of Warcraft, right? However, the art team and the music, they kill it. Every single expansion. So, all you're going to want to do, fly around Pandaria, enjoy the zones, enjoy the music, and at the same time, just keep an eye and a lookout for Ghost Iron Ore nodes and also Trillium Ore nodes. And that, guys, that's pretty much it. Now, the two zones that I feel do the best are Town Long Steps and Kunlai Summit. That's just a personal feeling. I have no real data supporting that, so take that as you will. However, guys, you can really just fly around anywhere at Pandaria. You might want to avoid Dreadwish just to avoid those Kyperite ores. Those don't really sell too well. However, guys, guys, listen, just take in the zones, enjoy it, mine some nodes. Now, if you only have mining, you can simply stop there, smelt the ore into bars, put them on the auction house, you know, make a ton of gold just doing that. One ghost iron bar sells for 17 gold, stack at 200 being 3,400. One trillion bar will sell for 145 gold, stack at 200 will sell for 29,000 gold. And again, prices will vary based on your server. Now, if you have alchemy, you could take this a bit of a step further with the transmute living steel and also trillium bar. Now, six trillium bars is needed to transmute the living steel and living steel is needed for the sky golem mount. So it usually sells well in the auction house and you could also transmute 10 ghost iron bars into trillium. Now, you're going to have to do some math here and sometimes the for All right, let me give you an example here. Living steel, one of them sells for 578 gold. Now, with the prices I listed in this video, it is actually better for me just to straight up sell the ghost iron bars instead of transmuting them into trillium and then tr or transmuting the trillium into living steel. However, sometimes that's not the case. The living steel will sell for more. So again, you're going to kind of have to do your own math here and basically do the math and see what the prices are on your server. Is it worth it selling the living steel? I will say, however, living steel sells like that. It sells super, super quick because people need it for their sky gold amount. The only downside for this and also the reason why it sells so quick is because it is on a daily cooldown for when you use the six trillion bars to do it. Or you can use three trillion bars and three spirits of harmony for the riddle steel transmute, which basically skips the daily cooldown. So again, if you have alchemy, you can use the transmutes there for the living steel and also the trillium. Or if you're a lazy sack of crap like me and don't feel like doing the math to figure out if it's worth doing the transmute living steel, you could simply just sell your ghost iron bars and your trillium bars and still make a ton of gold doing that. Now let's move on to the fifth and final method that I have for you guys in this video. And that's gonna be to farm out motes of harmony, which when you get 10 of them, you could turn that into one spirit of harmony, which sells for nine. 95 gold on the auction house or you can use it at the spirit of harmony vendor in your faction shrine for hoarded alliance and you could buy trillium ore which you could smelt into trillium bars if you have a miner which as we covered in the last method sells for a lot of gold now if your goal is just to get motes of harmony you don't care about anything else what you're going to want to do you're going to want to go head over to laura walker cho in the veil of eternal blossoms at the seat of knowledge Talk to him and queue for the Dread Approach, which is the first wing of the LFR Heart of Fear. You want to pull all the trash in there up to the first boss, kill all the trash, loot it, loot them. You'll get a ton of Motes of Harmony, but do not kill the first boss. Leave instance, reset instance, re -queue, go back in and repeat 10 times until you hit instance cap, which will happen pretty quick. Now, in my opinion, while that is the best way to get your Motes, it's probably not the most it's probably not the best way to make gold what you're going to want to do just clear all mop raids all the lfr difficulties you want to clear all the other raids on heroic difficulty with the exception of siege which you could do on lfr normal heroic and mythic and clear all the trash in that raid all the trash mobs or at least most of the trash mobs in those raids have a chance to drop motes of harmony for you and also while you're doing that you will make a killing in raw gold kind of similar to warlords of Drenner, all the bosses the weapon drops will vendor for a lot of gold you'll also be getting a lot of greens unlike warlords which will vendor well from the trash mobs and again guys you, you just loot from the bosses will vendor well so you'll be getting motes of harmony which sell well and you could also use it to buy trillium 
and making raw gold at the same time, making this farming method, farming method, very, very nice. So there you go, guys. That's all the methods I have for you today. But like I said at the start of the video, there are plenty of old world maps that sell on the auction house. So if you would like to leave a comment down below, letting, you know, some tips for people and also even me, I might, yeah, listen, I don't know everything. I'm not some kind of super genius, all right? Feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know what old maps sell well on your auction house, on your server. Let me know. And also, if this guide helped you, please throw a like. It does help me out a lot. And if you're not subscribed already, I'm hurt. You have broken my heart. Please hit the subscribe button. And as always, as always, the most important part of every video, I gotta let people know that Halo 2, Halo 2 was the best Halo. <laughs> yeah, right, dude. Halo 3 was the best Halo. Listen, if you want to debate that in the comments down below, bring it on. I could talk about Halo for hours. Let's go. Anyways, guys, I really do hope this guide helped you. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And until next time, bye-bye.